Okay, welcome back. Hour number two. This is going to be a very, very interesting hour. We're going to talk about a film that I consider to be probably the most stunning and important political documentary that I have seen in many, many years, if ever, in terms of major American politics and the revelations that this film presents. It is called Dreams from My Real Father. The director and producer is Joel Gilbert, and he will be joining us this hour to talk about the film. Now, as many of you know, there's another film. Actually, there are a couple of the documentaries out there. One of them is called 2016 Obama's America, which got some fairly substantial major theatrical review and runtime, which was kind of surprising. I think it's grossed $36 million now. I saw the film. Uh, well done. A lot of hard work went into it. You can't fault uh, Dinesh D'Souza for putting his, his energy and efforts into trying to come up with some very provocative and interesting analyses of who Barack Hussein Obama is, his socialist, Marxist, communist, his red leanings and all the rest of it. But I left the theater disappointed because I felt there was so much more that could have and should have been looked at. And then I got a chance to see a film that I've already mentioned the title of, and I was just knocked over. Dreams from My Real Father. And I'll tell you right now, if Dreams from My Real Father had the major theatrical presentation and availability that D'Souza's film had, I think Obama would be trailing in the polls right now. We're going to find out about a lot more with the film's director and driving force, the man who created it, Joel Gilbert. Hi, Joel. Welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks for having me tonight. Yeah, I am, uh, I am still stunned at uh, what you managed to put together, how cogent, how intelligent, how wise, how factual, how visually stunning it all is. When did you get the idea to do a film on this subject? Well, I, uh, I'm a Middle East uh, studies and Islamic studies uh, uh, expert, so to speak. I do a lot of uh, uh, articles and lectures, and I did a film called Farewell Israel, Bush, Iran, and the Revolt of Islam about five years ago, and then two years ago I decided to uh, make a film about the Iranian nuclear program and the uh, very problematic U.S. policy. So I produced a film called Atomic Jihad, Ahmadinejad's Coming War, and Obama's Politics of Defeat. Uh -huh. And in, in uh, researching this film, I watched about a hundred uh, videos, speeches of Obama looking for little tidbits about foreign policy, and I noticed a very odd pattern. Every time he spoke of the rich and the poor, he started screaming and yelling in the preacher voice, and he would get very excited and happy. Yes. And uh, all of a sudden, he'd go back to normal on the next subject. So I realized no one was that good of an actor that uh, he had an inner passion for class struggle. Now, I didn't know why, because as far as I knew, he'd gone to Harvard, law, the Ivy League, exclusive uh, high school, exclusive prep school in Hawaii. He decided he, to read he, his book. Yeah, He didn't yeah. have a tough life, no. <laughs> no, but I decided to read his book, Dreams from My Father, mm -hmm. and right away it just stood out as this journey in American socialism and Marxism. He shows up at Occidental College as a committed revolutionary Marxist to study with Marxist professors. He goes into organizing, which is a socialist profession. He's into Malcolm X. And he kept talking about this guy named Frank 22 times, Frank Marshall Davis, literally raised by the guy. Mm -hmm. And he talks about uh, all these strange happenings. He says, my grandfather took me to Frank's house, and there was some strange, unspoken transaction going on. So he dropped all these hints uh -huh. about Davis, mm -hmm. decided to read about Frank Marshall Davis right away. All the photos you see, my God, he looks just like Obama, whereas Obama looks nothing like the Kenyan. So the investigators looking into Obama's uh, past, uh, I realized, when they kept asking, where's the birth certificate, I realized they were asking the wrong question. The, wrong, the question was, who is the real father? And that's how you understand Obama's ideology, his political foundation, and where he wants to take this country. Would it surprise you if some of the energies being put in the alternative media and some of the mainstream media that are pushing toward that wrong question, the birth certificate, where was he born, the birth certificate, rather than who is the real father? Would it surprise you if some of that is intentional? 
Oh, not at all. I mean, Obama orchestrated this misdirection for many years of his book. A third of the book is talking about Kenya. He introduced himself to the country. He said over and over, my father was a goat herder from Kenya. He sold himself to America as this multicultural ideal, and therefore a man who stood above politics who could bring people together. Uh, the reality is uh, that despite Obama giving the perception of a nice man with an inspiring family story, the reality is Obama has a deeply disturbing family background that he obscured with this Kenyan goat herder to hide a Marxist political foundation. Uh, this is an irreconcilable agenda with American values, and it's a totally unacceptable manipulation of the electorate to misdirect everybody about this Kenyan goat herder when, in fact, Obama is a red diaper baby. This means the child of a Communist Party USA member. All the leaders of the Marxist terrorist groups, the Weather Underground, uh -huh. Jeff Jones, Catherine Boudin, uh -huh. all red diaper babies. By the way, David Axelrod, his mother was a communist journalist, just like Obama's father mm -hmm. was a communist journalist. Uh, They're both red diaper babies in the White House today. I haven't even heard that name, Catherine Boudin, in a long time. That's wild. Yeah, these people were at the core of the Weather Underground. Uh, What's, what's really remarkable to me is how can it be that Obama's book, not, we know who wrote the book now, uh, admittedly so, it, it wasn't Obama. Uh, tell us more about that. Well, it's uh, quite obvious to anyone who knows anything about writing, and even if you don't, uh, it's been well established and admitted by heirs and others. Even Obama's friendly biographers like Chris Anderson uh, chronicled the fact that uh, Bill Ayers wrote Obama's uh, autobiography, Dreams from My Real Father. Number one, it shows how close the two were for many, many years, going yeah. back yeah. Uh, farther than Obama has admitted. Uh, number two, uh, it shows uh, the ideological circle that Obama uh, lived in. Obama went from Hawaii to Chicago to organize. He followed in his father's footsteps in reverse. Obama's father, Frank Marshall Davis, was a communist propagandist. He joined the Communist Party in 1932, went to Hawaii in 1948 on orders from the Kremlin through mm -hmm. Comintern International. Mm -hmm. They wanted to foment a revolution in Hawaii to right. expel U.S. forces, which were considered an obstacle to Soviet expansion in Asia. Right. The Soviets wanted Hawaii. They didn't want it to become a state. Correct. Uh, yeah. Davis uh, orchestrated the uh, labor union. Uh, he was struggle. very effective there, wasn't he? He was. They, they they failed eventually after six months to take over the island. But he did become a journalist yeah. for the communist newspaper. Yeah. And it, in my film Dreams of My Real Father, you, we show all the headlines and all the writings of Davis mm -hmm. that are manifest in Obama's policy today. And when we hear Obama on the campaign trail as a the real Marxist, not the one who's hiding behind the goat herder, but you hear his rhetoric: the rich people don't pay their fair share, the top one percent are oppressing everybody. Oh yeah. You didn't build that. Somebody else did. This is the classic Marxist uh, propaganda that Davis probably learned in the early 30s, only 15 years after the Bolshevik Revolution, uh -huh. when his father was indoctrinated uh -huh. into the Communist Party. Uh -huh. So this is the story. There's an evil straw man that is uh, preventing everyone, no matter how hard they work, from possibly advancing themselves. It's a, it's a complete fantasy. It's a failed ideology. And unfortunately, as you alluded to before, uh, there's very little media to cover this or even question this nonsense. None. None um, to speak of, really, when you consider the totality of what could be there for you. It's just you're, you're an echo in the wind. This, uh, this issue of Obama saying, you didn't build that, somebody else did. And, the, and his statements about redistribution, which I played a couple of times last week on the program. And the very next day, the Romney camp... And Paul Ryan began talking about Obama and redistribution. Now, I'm not saying they heard it here, but it was an interesting coincidence. They have so much that they could be pulling out and putting all over the media because Romney has got access to the mainstream media. They could be nailing the socialist, Marxist, communist thing all day and all night. So far, I've seen one day where they both talked about redistribution. Other than that, they're, they're, they're wasting their time, and I don't understand it unless the fix is in somewhere. Well, I think if they lose the election, they're going to say, you know, when we trotted out that 30-year-old slogan, are you better off, you know, we should have updated that thing. 
That's what they're going to end up saying. Uh, I am, am actually stating the case probably four hours a day on radio, an impassioned, urgent argument as to why Obama is unacceptable because of his uh, Marxist ideology, the fact that he lied about who he was and, and where he would take the country. I wish uh, uh, Romney would present uh, an argument that is as passionate well, and reasonable as that one. You're, you're right. They certainly know of your film. They ought to look at the damn thing every day if they had half a brain in their campaign and roll out the reality of who this guy is. Not only is he a felon, he's a fraud, he's a criminal, he's not legally entitled to be in that White House. He doesn't well, belong there. That's just for openers. And then we go into your background. The man is as un-American as it gets, folks. He doesn't like this country. And, and we'll talk about his wife a little later. Okay. But this, this is crucial. Again, dreams from my real father. And you click on Joel's name, you can go and, and get a copy. This is must viewing. I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm just asking you to take a look at this and consider it.